Okay, students, 12.6 is probability and the addition rule. So let's see um, what we have here. So to find the probability that one event occurs or another event occurs, so we have an or in here, you must know how the two events are related. If the two events cannot happen at the same time, they are said to be mutually exclusive. So for example, if you roll a dice, you have six different outcomes. And if you want the probability of rolling a three or a four, well, you can't roll a three and a four. You can only roll a three or a four. And so those two, like if you made a Venn diagram, those two are totally separate. They don't have any crossover with them. Okay, that's the idea of mutually exclusive. So two events that have no outcomes in common. One way of finding the probability of two mutually exclusive events occurring is to examine their sample spaces. So that's what we are seeing here is that one, two, five, and six are still possibilities, but they're not in the events that we want to occur there. Okay. Um, so notice that the probability, so the probability of getting a three or a four, there's two possibilities of getting a three or a four out of six possibilities total, which is one third. If you find the probability of getting a three, it's one six, probably a four is one six, and probably of three or four is one six plus one six, which is two six or one third. So you can add those probabilities together in this case. So this example illustrates the first of two addition rules for probability. So we have addition rules for probability here. If two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability that A or B occurs is the sum of the possibilities of each event. So probability of A or B is probability of A plus probability of B. So those are if they're mutually exclusive there. Okay. So different from the multiplication rule before where you had two different things happening back to back. Here we want just one event um, and what are our one role um, and then what are the probability of those things. Okay, so biodiversity here. Um, of the more than 79,800 species of our, um, on a red list of threatened species, um, seabirds are of particular interest um, because they are indicators of um, broader marine health issues. The circle graph shows the proportion of seabird species in each red list category. What is the probability that a randomly selected species of seabird is on the critically endangered list or on the endangered list? So critically endangered is here and endangered is here. So one or the other is the idea. So we have a 17 point, sorry, we have a 5% chance. We have 17 chances of being critically endangered and we have 31 that are on the endangered list that are there. So we have those different numbers there out of the total. We also have the percentages there. Um, I have to go back and look at this probability that a randomly selected species of seabird is on the critically endangered list. So we're going to add these together. Can't have both of them happen at the same time. We're going to add our 5% and our 19% together, and that's going to be 9% um, together, and that's going to be 14% as an answer here. <clears throat> so that's our probability there. Okay, so events that are not mutually exclusive. If two events can happen at the same time, they are not mutually exclusive. So when a die is rolled, what is the probability of getting a number greater than two or an even number? So the numbers that are greater than two are three, four, five, and six. The even numbers are two, four, and six. And there's an overlap there of the four and the six. So these are not mutually exclusive. They could happen at the same time. Okay, so from the Venn diagram, you can see that where the, all the numbers go, probably of greater than a two or even is five out of six because one, two, three, four, five of the six numbers are within um, those two events. Okay, the um, because it's possible to roll a number that's greater than two and an even number, these events are not mutually exclusive. There's that again. Consider the probability of each event. So probably of greater than a two is four out of six or probably of an even is three out of six. Okay, so we have those. Adding these probabilities results in a number greater than one. <clears throat> and so we would end up with, if we just added those together, we would end up with 7 out of 6, which doesn't make sense. Okay, so to account for the intersection, you subtract the probability of the common events once. So what you're seeing down here is that they take that 7 out of 6, but then they subtract the ones that are in between here. So there's 2 out of 6 that are in between there, and so that's where you get the 5, 6 probability that's there. Okay, so the addition probability <coughs> um, or addition rule here is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now, I usually suggest that you just know this rule. Here's why. If they are mutually exclusive, there just is no intersection and there's nothing that you subtract, which still gives you the probability of A and the probability of B. Okay, so you don't have to know both of them. You can just know one of them um, and just know that you're going to add together there. Okay, so an example with um, that one, a polygon is chosen at random by the probability of each set um, of events. So choosing a figure that has more than four lines of symmetry. So more than four lines of symmetry. Let's see, we would have um, one, two, three lines of symmetry here or more than seven sides. Okay, I'm going to count both of them. One, two, three, four lines of symmetry here. So this would have four 
I sort of five lines of symmetry and five sides, six lines of symmetry and six sides. This is going to have seven lines of symmetry, but it's going to have seven sides. Um, more than four lines of symmetry. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are going to have more than four lines of symmetry out of eight. More than seven sides is going to be one, two, three, four. So we're going to add those together, which is going to give us 11 out of 8, which is a problem, but we counted some of those multiple times. So we counted 1, 2, 3, 4 of them multiple times, if I've got that right. And then that's going to give us 7 out of 8. So the probability of that is going to be 7 out of 8. Hmm. i got to recount here. Let's try that again. Okay, so choosing a figure has more than four lines of symmetry. So that would be more than four. That's why. One, two, three, four, five, six lines of symmetry there. Okay, so that's going to be six out of eight. Um, plus, choosing a figure has more than seven sides. Nope, more than seven sides. So yeah, I got to read this correctly. So one, two, three. So that would be plus three out of eight. So that's going to give us nine out of eight. And the repeats on there were three of them. So you're going to end up with 6 out of 8, which is 3 fourths. Okay, there's our correct answer there. Okay, choosing a figure that has more than, sorry, let me erase here and come back to the beginning. <clears throat> okay, so choosing a figure oops, that has more than 15 diagonals. So more than 15 diagonals. Let's see. We would have 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight. That one's there. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think there's fourteen diagonals here. So let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This one's going to have more. Okay, so more diagonals. One, two, three of them are going to have more diagonals. Um, total interior angle measure of 90, or no, sorry, 900. So if we have seven sides, 7 minus 2, which equals 5 times 180, um, 0, 4, there's my 900. So this one's going to have 900 degrees, but it does say more greater than, yep, so we don't want to include that. So plus three more. And the intersection is those, so it's just three out of eight um, for this one. So again, then technically I did minus the intersection of threes. Um, choose a figure that has more than two pairs of parallel sides or at least one diagonal. So let's go through all of these again. More than two pairs of parallel sides. So two pairs of parallel sides, none, more than two pairs of parallel sides, more than two pairs of parallel sides, and more than two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so that's going to be three out of eight. <clears throat> and then choose a figure um, that has at least one diagonal. So at least one diagonal. No diagonal here. There is a diagonal there. So seven. Oops, I meant to change colors there. One, two, three, four, five, six. All seven of those are going to have the diagonal. And then if we add those together, we subtract the overlap. So one, two, three is an overlap. Um, it's going to be seven eighths is an answer here. Okay. So that's what you're doing with those. And you notice that I, I mean, you're going to make mistakes when you do it. You got to be really careful about um, counting and um, understanding those. Okay. So you guys have your homework right there.